Hello guys, in today's tutorial I'll be making our player blink. And if you don't know, blink is like teleport real quickly a short distance. And so I have the sprites over here. And let's import them into Unity and do what we did to all the other sprites. In this case, pixel unity is 10. This is point two color. This is multiple, and in the sprite editor, the grid will be 20 by 20. Slice, apply, and with this, we'll be creating an animation right now. So click on on our player, go to the animation, and let's create a new animation called player two blinks, or two blink, or whatever. And this animation will have the disappearing and the appearing. So first let's make our player disappear like this. And then let's make our player appear again like that. The sample size can be left alone. I mean you can change it to 30, but uh, that doesn't really matter. And here in the animator window of the player, this new animation was created for us. And we are, what we're going to do is to create here a bool, a parameter bool called blink. And basically, well, what we want to do is to make a transition from any state to blink, and then to from blink to player idle like this and the blink animation plays when blink is equal to true and this one will be left alone and now let's get to the code ok first we will be creating a couple of variables called blink variables so let's see let's create a public float Blink distance uh, uh, let's create also a fault blink timer a public float called blink time and also a bool called facing right. Okay, so right now our player isn't yet programmed to 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 blink. So let's program that in here in the start of the update function. You can name it the blink code or whatever. And so if our player presses one key, I'm going to set it to be the J key. You can set it to whatever. If our player presses the J key, then the bool, this bool over here, will be set, the blink bool will be set to true. Else we don't want him to, to blink, so we can put here else and set this to false. Okay, we are also going to create a new function in the bottom of our code and let's create it the void, let's name it the blink function, like so. And in this blink function, basically, what we're going to do is to make our player move. And we can do that by using transform dot position plus equals something. Now this something over here we can put here in the exact director because if our player is facing that side, it will be on vector. If it's facing that side, it's, it will be another vector. 
and that's why we created this facing right variable on the top this one and we're going to set it here right now so if the transform dot local scale dot x of our player equals one which is when he's facing the right like he's right now as you can see it's one then we want the facing right to be equal to two else facing right to be equal to false okay and with that done over there here in the blink function we're going to create a, a vector free called blink and now let's create here uh, if clause if facing right then the blink vector which is a vector free equals a new vector free and that's in the first in the x we want to type here the blink distance which will be, uh, which is a public variable and the other two will be zero the reason that we are using vector free instead of vector two is because sometimes it makes some problems with the transform position. Else, if our player is not facing right, then the blink will be equal to the exact same thing, but the blink distance will be a minus blink distance. And now just add to the transform position and plus equals a blink, just like this. And we have our void blink function done. Now this function isn't being executed because it's not being called anywhere. And well, we're going to call it in our animation. It's a bit weird, but it works. Click on our player in Unity. Go to the animation. Make sure that you are in the blink animation. Click between these two sprites, the two small ones. And let's add an event. And what this event does is that it calls for a function. In case, in this case, the only non-standard function that we have in our script is the blink function. So that's the only one that's displayed. And that's done. We, we also want to change the blink distance, which is zero. We want to change it to something like two or three units. So now, if we hit play. If we press J, you can see that our player teleports and it has this cool animation. But now there are two problems that we have, and I'm going to solve them. Which is that we can teleport real quickly if you want, and we don't want that. And we can teleport while we are on, while we are not, and we can teleport while we are on the air. Now the fact that we can teleport while in the air is because this function overrides this one. And I have uh, I've tried to make several things, but I only found one solution. If you guys found it, find another solution, tell me. But well, the solution that I find is to change the jump tree to not go not execute from all any states. It will execute from any state but this one. So we're going to have to delete this transition from any state to the jump tree or the jump animation or whatever. And we're going to make transitions from every state except from the blink state into the jump tree. And just like it was from the any state to the jump tree, the jump tree will execute when grounded equals false. So set all of those, set all those transitions from any state except the blink one to jump tree to be grounded equals to false. And that should fix that issue, as I'm going to show you right now. Yep, now we can teleport value in the air, which is quite cool. And now let's make that time thing so that we can't blink always. 
and the way that we're going to solve that time thing is by using these two variables over here, these two ones, these ones, and let's also add a bool over here, a bool that that's called can blink, which will be set by default for true. And the way that we're going to do this is if input .categorism is j and can blink, then our player will blink. Now the way that we're going to make this work is that by default our player can blink. But now when we press when we blink, we want that can blink variable to be set to false so that our player can blink again. And now we're going to create here an, another if clause. And so if uh, can blink is false, is false, then the timer, then the blink timer will be, will, it will be added to the blink timer, the time dot delta time dot delta time, which is the time that has passed since the last update. So this is just like a regular counter that counts seconds or whatever. And now we're going to create also another if cause so if the blink timer is greater than the blink time which is by default one so if if this time if the time passed is is greater than one which is what we set over here then we want to we want the can blink we want the can blink variable to be equal to true and we also want the the timer itself the blink timer to be equal to zero again close parentheses over here and over here to make it two separate if clauses like so and if we save and if we play you can see that only in one second only after one second we can blink oops we fall off and you can change that blink time in here to set it you can set it for 0.5 seconds for example now it's a bit faster anyways you can set it to whatever you want and that's it for today guys thank you for watching and see you next time.